Beats. Um, this is courtesy of RA. It's regarding London's Body Movement Festival, which is definitely one of the better festivals that we have here in London. And they've now announced some stage hosts for 2023. So it says as follows, East London Body Movement Festival has announced stage hosts for its 2023 edition. Going down on Saturday, July 29th, the queer-focused All Daya will take over 16 industrial spaces, including three new ones in Hackney Wick. More than 20 LGBTQ plus collectives will host stages um, such as Budokai, Queer Brook, Chapter 10, Rap Party, T4T Love Energy, um, Jungle Kitty, Femme Fresh, Fresh, I you say that word, Queer House Party and T-Boys Club. Um, this year's official charity partner is London Trans Pride with one pound donation from each ticket sale going towards funding their work. Um, here's a charity fundraising initiative. The full list of stage shows is available below. Um, the artist lineup is still TBA. So obviously you got it there, Body Movement Festival happening in 24th of July. So I'm definitely eager to check that out as well. But a part of me is also wondering, they're now kind of expanding the stage shows. They're putting it in different places, new spaces and whatnot. It's going to be a real big affair. I'm wondering overall, right? I'm really, 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 really wondering what happens when this ends up going critical mass. What happens when all the normies end up going there because I've said it before, but in London, especially, I'm not sure what it is like in out in the UK, but in London, all the best parties in London, the ones that you have the best fun in and you have the greatest time and you flip and sweat your face off are the queer LGBTQ plus nights. Those are the best parties for the most part. All the other parties where they book the same old, you know, top 50 mix mag DJs and the bait business techno guys and all the bait TikTok techno guys and gals, they're all a bit boring. These guys put on the best parties, but obviously these parties aren't really made for me, right? They're not made for, you know, hetero, cisgendered gay guys like me. They make them for their people from their community to kind of create a, a quasi safe space for them to kind of dance and kind of have fun at. But over time, people like myself get attracted to those parties. We want to go, we want to hang out, we want to have fun. And we maybe water it down a bit. And we maybe just ruin the vibe overall over time. So I'm wondering how are they going to be able to kind of keep the vibe and that special, the specialness they have about that space kind of intact, despite getting bigger. And obviously, you know, you'd imagine, you know, more regular people kind of turning up there. Like, how do you make that happen? I'm not too sure, to be honest, but big up them regardless. Um, hopefully they work it out and I can't wait anyway because I'm going to be there 29th of July. Definitely going to be skanking around there because it's definitely somewhere that I can go and have fun, let my head down and not take myself too seriously. We've been seeing in the chat here. said, Ago, are you going to Deck Mantle this year? No, no Deck Mantle para me. I think the only festival that I'm going to be trying to do is Houghton, which I ended up not doing last year. So if I'm going to do a festival, it'll probably be Houghton. Deck Mantle might be a bit of a stretch for me this year, um, mostly because I haven't been just yet. Um, it's abroad. I'm probably going to be doing loads of mini trips again all over the place. So it might be a bit of a stretch to go to, but I would like to go one day. But I think the only trip that I will do or festival, sorry, I will do like in terms of staying somewhere for a prolonged period of time is definitely Houghton, which is definitely taking place in the UK. So easy to transport to and whatnot. But I definitely need to go because I kind of pushed it out of it last year. I made excuses. So I want to follow through and do Houghton this year. But Dick Mantle for sure, I'll be trying to do sometime in the future. And talking about Dick Mantle, funny you bring that up. This news is interesting, right? This news. Um, this news courtesy of RA. Deck Mantle partners with Whore. Um, or I pronounce it Hore, Hore. How do how do you pronounce that word? I think it's Hore. It should be Hore, right? Do I, have I do, do do I pronounce it right? Let's see what this says here. Um I'm sure that's how you pronounce it. You pronounce it Hore, right? German to English. Let's see what it says here on Google. German to English. It should be Hore. Okay, cool. My bad. Let's do let's just translate. Let's get rid of let's get rid of the word German. Let's just do this. Oh, it's called here. Okay, how you pronounce it? Hor. Hor. Okay. Hor. Hor. Okay. Hor. 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 Anyway, this is a really good, interesting article because this kind of confirms what I kind of spoke about before and maybe some rumors I heard about uh, prior. So it says Dick Mantle partners with Hor which means that the rumor that was kind of spreading within the dance music scene that 
um, boiler room has some sort of falling out with Dick Mantle is somewhat true and that they wouldn't be returning again um, you know 2023 onwards because I think the last event that they did with them was 2020 and that that was a big deal because I feel like boiler room did a really good job of kind of promoting Dick Mantle to the masses especially someone like myself I'm not too sure if I would have heard of Dick Mantle if it wasn't for boiler room streams of it and i think a lot of artists also a lot of djs definitely got a bump in their bookings from having their live stream featured on boiler room that they were playing at deck mantle so it kind of worked hand in hand you know deck mantle got to jump onto the live stream thing by using by you kind of using kind of you know um boiler room's name and notoriety in the scene and then boiler room obviously got to legitimize himself by having a very long established and respected festival also kind of trust them to do the live stream but something changed along the way I think just to be sensible and not to kind of, you know, um, pontificate about nonsense, most likely what happened is that because Boy Room got bought by Dice, you would assume they had different ideas and prerogatives that they wanted and maybe Deck Mantle didn't fit into that and maybe they want to, you know, partner up with another festival or maybe they just don't want to do the whole festival live stream thing anymore. Who knows? But I have a feeling most likely because Dice bought Boy Room, they probably decided, hey, we want to go a different direction. Or it could be, that the boiler room guys legitimately did have a falling out with Dick Mantle. But regardless, this is a big look for horror for them. This is a really big look because they're essentially a really small kind of platform, live streaming platform, but they've kind of grown exponentially in the last few years. And when they started, they were mostly just a platform that kind of promoted people from Berlin or within surrounding areas. And they kind of were the kind of de facto European sort of boiler room platform, but with a little bit more of an authentic, I think grassroots sort of like feel to them. They didn't, they haven't felt like they've sold out as quickly as boiler room. I feel like boiler room, as soon as the money from Ray-Ban started coming in, they went straight to the whole like vice route of selling out as quickly as possible, getting as soon as many sponsors as possible and brand deals as possible instead of maybe kind of keeping a little bit core. So this basically is a really good look for horror and where they are in the culture now that Dick Mantle will kind of want to align with them. And maybe it kind of speaks to, you know, their kind of longevity now in the industry because you imagine this is going to probably be a multi-year kind of deal that they kind of sign, especially if it ends up kind of popping up and going well. And I'm also curious as well, if this is going to be something that may spurn them to do their own festival, they may end up sometime in the future deciding, hey, Horror needs their own festival too. Anyway, this is the article courtesy of RA. It says, Amsterdam Festival Deck Mantle has revealed details of a new stage in collaboration with Berlin streaming platform Horror. Launching in August, Radar will replace the Boiler Room stage. See, that's a new one. Um, which which is part of the festival since 2013. Jesus Christ. So the new stage is going to be Radar. All sets from Radar will be live streamed on Horror. The festival also revealed new acts, including Luke Slater, oh, that's Amazing, Interplanetary Criminal, Wow, Knife, um, Olaf Derger, Shanti Celeste, Peach, Gabriel Quartang was a amazing isabella um will go back to back all of these artists will play at the radar stage alongside the likes of dj stingray avalon emerson paris smith um live wu-tang and were announced back in january Hall recently launched a pop-up studio in london and it will run throughout april but that is pretty sick man pretty pretty sick lineup of people there really eager to see some of that what date is that going to be on that's in august august date for deck mantle coming up Ticket prices are pretty pricey as well. If I'm going to just double check here, courtesy of RA and see what they're saying. I know you can't actually buy tickets, so you have to check somewhere else. But look at the list of people. Absolutely crazy good list of people playing. Let's actually just double check and see. Um, where, where can you get it? Where's the ticket link from there? It's not here. No ticket links there. You can't get them there. I want to just see how much they're charging. I think it's like a 100 euros, no? Let's see. Deck Mantle. Is it 100 euros? Let's see. Pro tickets. Are they even available just yet, or are the tickets not available? I think it should be. If it's if it's, if it's in August, it should already it should already be tickets already l listed. If it's happening in August for sure, let's just double check the website and see if it's gonna be on there. You got here, okay? You got tickets there. What's it saying? Oh, it's still going to okay, shop. Let's see how much they're gonna be. I'm gonna say something like a hundred euros. It make more sense. But I think the reason Deck Mantle is a bit misty for me is that if I'm not mistaken, Deck Mantle take place. It's not really in Amsterdam. It's that like kind of outside if I'm not mistaken. So you kind of have to get a com, and also you've got to sleep on the grounds or get a combination near and then cycle back and forth and walk. It's a bit long from what I've heard. Maybe I'm not, mis maybe I'm not right, but okay. So three day festival passes have sold out. They've only got four day ones and they're 225, which is not bad. That's quite a good deal. This is what I mean about when I saw Skankfest 
during my flipping random show live stream, I was really getting flipping, and you know, I was shocked at how much Skankfest tickets were in Las Vegas. Skankfest tickets to go see crazy, you know, to go, to go see basically somewhat unknown comics. They're not unknown for the most part, but for the most part, most guys only listen to flipping LA stuff and all the big guys. A lot of those guys on Skankfest, I don't really know too well. So to go pay $400 plus to go see them do, you know, stand up and whatnot and listen to their live podcast is a bit much, especially when you think about what you get from these festivals here in Europe. You get, you know, for 225 for festival day ticket to go and see, you know, hundreds of DJs play across four days on different stages in one of the best cities in the world in Amsterdam. It just feels a little bit like a tight one to go and, you know, to go. It, it just feels a little bit hard to justify $400 to go see flipping um, comedians in Las Vegas for me personally. But I remember somebody saying in my chat, actually, that um, Las Vegas is like that anyway, day to day. It's kind of expensive. I think someone said in my chat that allegedly like to go see a comedy show in Las Vegas, just a regular one, is something like $150 or something per ticket just because it's Las Vegas. So I guess Las Vegas is kind of maybe like Dubai where because of the location, it's just more expensive. It doesn't mean it's actually, um the you know, the value of the whatever you're getting. But yeah, um the ticket prices look pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. Pretty good festival. But like I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to do Okay, um, okay, Louis Shy just telling me in the chat. No, it's pretty close to Amsterdam Central. Okay, cool. Maybe I haven't done my research. I haven't done many research into it, so I might need to check it out. But let's see if I'm able to do two in one year like that. How to then and flipping deck mounted? That'd be pretty decent. But knowing me and knowing the amount of trips I go to, especially with the flipping, you know, I'm, I'm basically in Berlin like once per month, so that already kind of you know eviscerates my funds. But if I'm able to flip and do two in a year and do deck mantle and do Houghton. That's going to be pretty sick. So maybe I might look into that actually, because that's looking kind of meaty. And for 225, that might be something worth to kind of check out. 